In this video, we will give an overview of our paper titled TagMap, a text-based map for spatial reasoning and navigation with large language models. Consider the situation of a user asking the robot to help retrieve an instance of a desired class, in this case, a screwdriver. Ideally, the robot has a memory or a map of the scene that it can refer to to help it locate the object. Moreover, suppose that the screwdriver is not directly represented in the map. In that case, the robot should not simply give up but reason about alternative locations where a screwdriver could likely be found. For example, the map could contain a toolbox, which would be a promising place to check. Such maps are referred to as semantic maps. They're useful for robots as first, they provide context of a scene such that the robot can produce actionable plans, and second, they provide enough useful geometric information to enable spatial reasoning over the semantic context. Semantic map representations in existing works can be classified into two categories. First, there are explicit maps that directly annotate locations with a class label. These maps directly report what classes are contained within, but are generally limited to only handling a fixed number of predefined classes. Then, there are implicit maps that annotate locations with embedding vectors. For example, you can query the map shown here with the string table. The text encoder converts a string into a text embedding, which is then used to retrieve the location where the embeddings best match. In theory, the use of embeddings allows such maps to be capable of representing any semantic class. However, in practice, embeddings are not guaranteed to accurately capture the underlying semantics. Furthermore, we don't know what classes the map contains as we have to already know what we're looking for in order to query the embeddings in the first place. For grounded task planning, this is undesirable as the map does not directly provide the scene context. Instead, plans must be first generated and then checked by querying the map for whether the required components of the plan are likely to exist in the scene. Ideally, we want a map that can represent a very large number of semantic classes, not just of objects, but also of regions, places, and etc., while still being explicit in its representation. In this work, we move towards this ideal map by leveraging a class of vision models known as image tagging models. Such models are trained to output all the semantic classes recognized in an image as a set of text strings, which are referred to as tags. Tagging models are generally capable of recognizing thousands of classes ranging from common and rare objects to rooms and locations, and even materials and affordances. We propose a semantic map representation based on image tagging models, and we call our representation the tag map. Our map is created from a set of RGBD images along with their poses. The key idea here is to not store the detailed geometry of the scene, and instead only store a minimal set of information comprising of the viewpoint poses and the corresponding tags recognized at each viewpoint. To be more exact, the tag map stores a mapping from the unique recognized tags in the scene to the corresponding viewpoints that the respective tags were recognized from. For example, the tag bathrobe maps the viewpoints where the image was tagged with bathrobe. We emphasize here that each viewpoint does not store its image, only the pose of the viewpoint and set of values corresponding to the size of the viewpoint's frustum. We can then also retrieve the frustums for a given tag in 3D. Surprisingly, given only the small amount of information, we show that a simple method based on multi-view consistency can be used to extract useful coarse grain localizations in 3D for the recognized tags. For example, let's say we want to get a localization for this table from a tag map. First, we can retrieve the viewpoint frustums corresponding to the tag table. Next, a voting procedure over voxels produces a voxel likelihood for the tag over the space. We can then cluster over different level sets of the voxel likelihood to get localized bounding boxes of different votes or confidence levels. Lastly, we can clean up redundant localizations by applying a non-maximum suppression step. Here is an example of a predicted localization for the tag piano. While the bounding box is not tight, it clearly localizes the piano to a degree where it would be useful for spatial reasoning. Some additional object localization examples are shown here. For example, a printer in an office, cowboy boots in a closet, and thermostats mounted on the wall. Besides objects, we can also localize places, such as bathroom and laundry room, as shown here. We were to evaluate the coarse grain tag map localizations with traditional localization metrics, such as intersection over union, then they would perform quite poorly. For example, here we have the ground truth bounding box label for the sofa in green and a predicted localization in yellow. In this case, the intersection between the prediction and the label is small compared to its union, therefore resulting in a poor IOU. However, here it would be reasonable to say that this predicted localization is still useful for navigating to the sofa despite its poor IOU with the ground truth label. In the context of grounded navigation, what we really want to evaluate is how useful is a localization for reaching the intended thing and not how precisely the localization bounds that thing. Let's consider the example of where there are two sofas and there's a localization for sofa in yellow. We propose to evaluate the usefulness of the localization by computing the expected shortest path length to reach any instance of the target class from within the localization. Intuitively, this measures how good a localization is at finding the target class. When combined with additional threshold on this value, we can get a measure of precision for a set of predicted localizations. We can also measure recall by computing a similar metric. For each label instance in the scene, 
we compute the expected shortest path length to reach any predicted localization from a set of predicted localizations. In this example, the sofa closer to the predicted localization will be considered recalled as it has a small enough expected shortest path length. We then evaluate the tag map localizations against localizations from state-of-the-art open vocabulary scene representations, namely open scene and open mask 3D, using the proposed metrics for precision and recall. We find that the tag map localizations are competitive with, and in many cases outperform the open vocabulary representations that also store geometric information about the scene. Additionally, comparing the memory usage across different scenes, we find that the tag map uses orders of magnitude less memory than open scene and open mask 3D, it's mainly again due to it not storing geometric scene information. Lastly, the text-based nature of the tag map allows it to easily ground the reasoning of a large language model. We ground the language model by directly appending the set of recognized tags into the model's prompt. We further integrate the language model with the tag map through language model's function calling capabilities to allow to get more information from the map at its own discretion. Such functions include, for example, localizing specified tags, checking the distance between localized regions, and checking the distance from the robot to a localized region. We conducted real robot experiments where a user interacts with a language model conditioned on TagMap to solve various grounded navigation tasks. In this first example, we asked the robot to get us some tap water to drink. From the context, the language model suggests that tap water can be found at the sink. It then localizes the sink and commands the robot to move there. Once at the sink, we further asked the robot to heat up the water for us. The language model suggests that a microwave can be used for this and commands the robot to move there. In this next example, we ask the robot to navigate to the logo of our lab and to pose for a photo. As there are multiple logos that are localized, we further ask the robot to go to the one closest to a starting position. Thank you for watching, we hope that you will check out our paper for full details and additional results.